Welcome to Live Better Longer. I'm your host, Bill Borton. Money and investing are confusing to so many people. There's so many options out there, and when the markets are good, everybody's advisor's doing a great job. When the markets aren't good, now everybody's looking around for somebody who's got a better answer. My guest is Mark Friedenthal, who is the chief investment officer and founder of Friedenthal Financial, and he's also the founder of Tolarisk, which is an interesting uh, technology play that Mark's going to tell us about in a few more moments. Uh, Mark has a background in institutional investing and has been managing his own firm for the last nine years. Mark, welcome. Thank you for having me, Bill. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. So, Mark, give me your perspective, if you would, uh, on the big picture, and then you can drill down as much as you want into what investing looks like out there now and kind of where it's come from. Sure. So, at a high level, we really look at three basic tenets when we're thinking about what makes somebody a, a successful investor. Uh, one, of course, is good sound diversification. Another is having a, an attractive cost structure for whatever it is uh, that you're investing in. And the third one is finding the right risk level for you at that time and having some kind of process to have that evolve uh, as necessary. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know uh, these days, for a lot of reasons, there's a lot of discussion out there about fees. And so people are sensitive to that. And so some people go to one extreme and they'll go to uh, one of the, the large institutional firms in the suburban Philadelphia area. And then other people will work with people that charge higher fees and rely on a relationship and don't really know. But when people are savvy about fees, they you know, become very fee sensitive. and They talk about all that. Uh, the diversification, portfolio management, all that, people know they're supposed to rebalance, they know asset allocation's important, but you touched on risk and risk management. And risk management from the insurance perspective is what I'm all about, but risk management from investing is something that is really uh, not something that most people understand. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting exercise. I think of it really like a, a sort of a Goldilocks type uh, exercise where you don't want the risk level to be too high. You don't want it to be too low. Obviously, you want to find what's just right for that client at that time. If it's too high, you'll either find the client can't stomach the roller coaster or they can't meet some obligation along the way. If it's too low, that can be problematic as well. If it's too low, then the client is not going to enjoy the fruits of their labor however they define that. They're not going to enjoy it as much as they otherwise could have uh, if the risk level had, had been a, at a more appropriate level. So enjoyment might be for some when they retire. It might be how they retire, it, meaning the, their lifestyle. It might be what they leave their children or grandchildren or charity, or it might be some combination of these things. So, so we can see that if the risk level is too low, it's really not optimal, and if it's too high, it, it's problematic as well. So finding that right balance is, is that sort of unique science, and it challenges a lot of advisors, frankly. Well, so what we know historically, using those <coughs> dreaded things called rules of thumb, uh, you know that when you're younger and you have a lot more time, you know, theoretically, you can take more risk. That doesn't mean that emotionally or psychologically you're wired that way, right? We also know that when you get closer to retirement and your last paycheck, theoretically, uh, you want to take less risk. But again, not everybody does that. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so rules of thumb are better than nothing. So if you have no other information, then having a rule of thumb, again, is, is better than, than literally throwing a dart at the board. But Clients often have more information. It's just a matter of, of being able to utilize it uh, to tailor something that's more appropriate for them. Yeah, on average, as someone ages, the average person should probably take less risk. But that is a broad generalization. There is a lot of variance around that depending on the individual client circumstances. You might have a young client in their 20s who is buying their first house perhaps next year. In that case, if they're using a large portion of their nest egg to fund the purchase of that house, which is not just the down payment, it's the moving expenses, it's the furniture, it's the closing costs, et cetera. If that's a, a, a large percentage of their current nest egg, then their ability to take risk is gonna be much lower. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with their personality towards taking risk. Perhaps they like to, to jump out of airplanes for fun and so forth, but um, 
It's really two separate dimensions. And when you look at the way the SEC identifies or characterizes risk tolerance, they actually talk about two different dimensions. They talk about the client's or the individual's willingness to accept risk, which is really their personality, mm -hmm. and you talk about their ability to take risk, which is really your point about time. It's really a, a function of the chronology of all their cash flows. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, maybe my example is quite an obvious one. You don't necessarily need an advisor. You don't necessarily need technology. If all your money is being used tomorrow, you know you don't have a, an ability to risk it in, mm -hmm. in uh, you know, risky investments. Um, most real world situations are not that stark and not that obvious. So mm -hmm. there's usually a lot of shades of gray. Often clients, well, as a general rule, they have existing assets, of course. Uh, they have money that's going in and they have money that's coming out and those may be occurring across different tax statuses and they may be occurring at irregular intervals. So to be able to compute that ability to take risk can be a, a complex exercise and mm -hmm. requires some, some knowledge and requires often some, some technology to do that appropriately. And I know that at different times in people's lives, these things change dramatically. The Absolutely. capacity for risk and the uh, emotional That's ability. right. That's right. And you use the word capacity. That's a common term among advisors. Ability and capacity are really used interchangeably mm -hmm. in this sure. context. But that's exactly right. It will evolve. In fact, someone's personality is less likely to evolve. Mm -hmm. Their innate personality. When you think about psychological profiles, uh, you, you talk about how you might measure someone's how optimistic or pessimistic they might be, or how introverted or extroverted they might be. These kinds of personality traits tend to stay with us. If we were, if someone's an introverted 25-year-old, they are more likely to be an introverted 50-year-old. Not mm -hmm. categorically, but again, they tend to be more stable personality traits. Much like someone who is risk-seeking or risk-averse, those innate personality traits tend to stay with us. Now, there are other aspects that often influence behaviors uh, are, our preferences, you know, our short-term preferences for risk and reward, mm -hmm. they can change based on recent experiences. If, if their portfolio is doing well, if, they're, if uh, their neighbors are all employed, if the real estate market's doing well, these kinds of things tend to make people prefer more risk and reward. When those things go the other way, often people prefer less risk and reward. Those kinds of behavioral measurements are often more susceptible to uh, recency bias or anchoring or, or those kinds of experiences. So at any rate, we need to take a break right now for a word from our sponsors. I'm looking forward to continuing our discussion about risk management and investing with Mark Friedenthal. This is Bill Borton. We'll be back with more Live Better Longer. When did you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs design new directional signage and got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. I'm Casey Price, host of a brand new show on RVN TV called Justice For All. Tune in every Tuesday at 1 p.m. as some of South Jersey's amazing attorneys share their stories and important legal information that could affect you and the people you love. Remember, that's Injustice For All, every Tuesday at 1 p.m., only on RVN-TV. Is your business growing and now you need a new and bigger building? Has your organization outgrown their facility and now it's time to expand? Do your hobbies require the need for more space? If you're paying rent, but now you want the advantages of owning, the prospect of financing, construction, and on-time completion may seem out of your reach. General Steel Corporation has the answer. A pre-engineered steel building from the General will not only look great and satisfy almost any need, but you'll save time and money. Our team will help you create your building and deliver it to your location. We offer design services to help you present your concept to board members, bankers, or for fundraising. And the General can even help with financing. General Steel is a name you know, with quality backed by a 50-year structural warranty. Call today and find out how easy it is to have the building you want. You may even save up to $20,000 with rebates. If you need space, you need the general. Welcome back to Live Better Longer. I'm your host, Bill Borton, here with my guest, Mark Friedenthal. So Mark, before the break, we were talking about risk and we were talking about risk capacity and then, of course, the uh, psychological or emotional tolerance to risk. So tell me a little bit about how you help clients 
um, uh, understand and determine what those risk capacities and tolerances are, and then uh, what you've done about that as far as the technology you've developed. Sure. So when I started my advisory firm nine years ago, I was really surprised actually to find what advisors typically did as far as risk tolerance. Interestingly, in the United States, uh, a risk tolerance assessment is actually recommended, but it's not required or mandated by law as it is in some other parts of the developed world. But most advisors use very simplistic risk tolerance quizzes. Most of the outputs were categorical. So clients would be aggressive, moderate, conservative. Most people would, as you imagine, kind of fall in that moderate bucket. And I found that to be terribly unsatisfying. So I ask a list of 10 questions and one to 10, exactly. and then you get a profile. Exactly. And uh, when I talked to other advisors, they didn't really put much credence in it. Clients don't really put much credence in it because it really wasn't that helpful. Even categorizations like moderate mean different things to different people, even different advisors. Well, so it's a compliance CYA thing. That's right. That's right. So I felt that we really could do better. My background had been really in applied math, fixed income, derivatives, some more complex kinds of model building and, and risk management. And I thought, well, when I read the SEC's description, and actually FINRA's description as well is, is similar, they talk about these two different dimensions, these different aspects, as we mentioned. The client's willingness to accept risk and their ability, or as you mentioned, capacity to take risk. And I thought, well, this is really two separate exercises in a sense, and we need to figure out a way to, to, to measure these aspects separately and then combine them intelligently. As it happens, my wife is a PhD psychologist, and she's also a certified behaviorist. So she was a, a wonderful help to me in crafting that first dimension. How do we conduct what's called a psychometric profile, a psychological exam, to measure someone's innate personality? And there are conventional ways of doing it. We put our own twist on it. But there are traditional sciences around measuring those kinds of innate personalities. And we can compare them to a population. When it comes to ability, what I did was took my experience in managing large fixed income and derivatives portfolios for big financial institutions and said, we can take these kinds of traditional fixed income mathematics and we could point it to household cash flows. And that became a very unique approach to computing a client's ability to take risk. And so we had these two different dimensions of, of risk tolerance. And conceptually, the way we combine them is it's the bigger constraint at that time for that individual or that client, that couple. Mm -hmm. So even if they have the ability to take risk, higher ability, if they're not willing to accept that risk, then they shouldn't be taking that much risk because that would make them susceptible to a behavioral mistake, even in a sense not living with the roller coaster and reducing risk at an inopportune time. Nobody, nobody makes the behavioral mistake at a wonderful time. If all is going well, nobody thinks, oh, I should, I should have a low risk portfolio. So that was what we want to avoid with that psychological profile. When it comes to their ability, it works the other way. Even if they're willing to accept the risk, if the cash flow chronology, if their usage would dictate that they don't have as high an ability to take risk, that becomes the constraint. Mm -hmm. So rather than be a snapshot in time for compliance purposes, you conceived of a tool that can be used throughout a, a relationship with a client. That's right. Uh, where things change along the way and you can make adjustments in what you're doing to manage their money or do their financial planning based on changes in their capacity or their tolerance uh, for risk. That's right. In most cases, we can see how somebody's going to progress towards and through their cash flows, whether it's a home purchase or putting a kid through college or ultimately what somebody's using in retirement. And we can even incorporate the money that might be coming in. Could be from the sale of a piece of property or even a likely inheritance mm -hmm. or selling a business. So how did this go from you conceiving of these you know, psychological and mathematical processes into what ultimately became Tala Risk? Yeah, so um, we implemented this in the advisory practice uh, really quite early on. And the reception from clients was, was really amazing to us. It was not what I anticipated. But we kept hearing over and over again, this is really helpful, and I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the light bulb dawned on me, the light bulb went off for me, that this was bigger than just my, my investment advisory practice. So I used to tell people this was our proprietary process. 
Uh, unfortunately, the one downside of, of spinning off the intellectual property in, into a software company uh, is that I can no longer say it's proprietary for Friedenthal Financial because advisors from around the country, large and small, use Tolerisk uh, to be able to perform this kind of analysis for their clients. Mm -hmm. Well, as they say, there's plenty to go around for this everybody, is, right? This is true. So, this is true. So how does Tolerisk come into play when you're working with a client? Yeah, so there are a series of questions that are asked to the client. Uh, some of them are about their personality, how they see themselves or how they behave or how they compare to others and so forth. So we can identify, generally speaking, how risk-seeking to risk-averse they are as, as individuals. And when you have a couple, it's often important to measure both personalities because mm -hmm. sometimes they can, be, they can be different. And that's- Oh, yeah, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. There you, you know. go, <laughs> there you go. So, we, we also map out the cash flow chronology. So we're able to ask them questions about what they have, what their savings patterns are, what their spending patterns are, and, and what kind of the one-off cash flows mm -hmm. might be. And we can, we can consolidate that into a, a, a quite an accurate measurement of someone's ability to take So risk. this all becomes real world stuff for you and the client as opposed to a lot of hypotheticals. That's right. And one of the things you mentioned before is that it's really a process. It's a process that can evolve with this client. So we can show them, we can illustrate to them how their ability to take risk is likely to evolve. Now, we're always gonna have better information in the future than we do today. So it's not that this is a, a one-time exercise, but we can give them a realistic expectation about how it'll evolve and how we'll be able to respond by, by dynamically evolving their portfolio as they move kind of through their investing career with us. And so now, what, are, are they seeing graphic? Sure. Or are they seeing spreadsheets? What are they seeing? No, it, Tolerisk is a cloud-based solution. We can, even with clients that aren't local, we can share our screens and share, share graphics and, and make it very easily understood by the client. And there's, there's actually another, there's another statistic that accompanies what we've been discussing in Tolerisk that's really important for me as a fiduciary, as an advisor, and, and for my advisors, which is we're also computing the probability that the client, one or both, if there are spouses, that the client will outlive their money. And the reason this is so important as a fiduciary is that if the client's premise isn't realistic, most of the time I find it is actually, but let's say 10% of the time it might not be. It's incumbent upon us as fiduciary advisors to let them know, to counsel them and coach them on how to adjust the plan to make it satisfying to them and more realistic. We don't want to provide advice on something as important as a risk directive if we're not confident that it's, it's based on a well-founded uh, premise or set of assumptions. Well, if you don't know when you're going to die, then it's pretty hard to know whether you're going to be spending too much money or not enough money. And either mistake uh, is not really good. You know, you spend too much money, you run out, and you spend too little, and you have a diminished lifestyle and retirement, which is not really a good thing either. Yeah. So we're going to take another break for another word from our sponsors. I'm Bill Borton. I'll be back in a moment with more with Mark Friedenthal. Did you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. Hey everyone, this is Donna Valente, sales performance and leadership coach and founder of the Enterprise Sales Institute. Join me every Wednesday at 11 o'clock here with RVN TV on That Sales Show. On this show, we are going to share with you best practices in emotional intelligence, sales process, and sales strategy with some of the industry's biggest thought leaders. So, don't forget, 11 o'clock Wednesday, here with RVN TV and That Sales Show. Got a quarter? Welcome back to Live Better Longer. I'm your host, Bill Borton, here with my guest, Mark Friedenthal from Tolerisk and Friedenthal Financial. So, Mark, if people want to talk to you about Friedenthal Financial or about Tolerisk, how do they get in touch with you? So, if 
it's an individual investor, somebody that needs help either with financial planning or investment management, they can just go to FriedenthalFinancial.com. Uh, if it's an advisor, somebody that's looking to utilize this kind of technology with their clients, they can go to Tolerance.com. Good, very, very good enough, succinct and simple. So hopefully some of the folks viewing our show will indeed reach out to you. I think it would be a good idea. So let's talk a little bit more granularly about Tala Risk and how you use that in the financial planning process. So you, you had mentioned before the break that there's a lot of unknowns in a financial plan. It would be pretty easy to plan if we knew exactly, you said, if, if we knew when we were going to die. Mm -hmm. uh, if we knew exactly how much we were going to spend in the future, that would be helpful. And if we knew what our portfolios would return in the future, that would be pretty helpful too. Well, spending's not linear. And it, investment returns are not consistent. Correct. And life <clears throat> tosses us curveballs from time to time. So this is why you need to be able to make adjustments. Right. So that's one of the reasons why we built Tolerance to be so deep from an analytical perspective, is we needed to account for those three large moving parts. Uh, one is portfolio returns in part are, are based on the risk levels that you're taking. So we know at times in your life when you'll be taking more risk, the average returns will be higher, but the dispersions will be greater. In other words, the drawdowns, the risk of losses are, are greater. And, and when you're at a point in your life where you're likely to have a lower risk level, the opposite is true. Lower returns, lower risk. When it comes to future spending, we're really talking about, we don't know what inflation is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so inflation could be very high as it was in the late 70s or early 80s. It could be very low as it's been running more recently and obviously lots of shades in between. And, and you mentioned we don't know when we're going to die. Interestingly, we have really good broad spectrum data in the U.S. on mortality probabilities. Mm -hmm. And we've built that into Tolerance so we can accurately reflect all three of these moving parts. So when we tell a client you've got a 7% probability that John or Jane or both will outlive their money, it's based on a lot of robust uh, mathematics behind the scenes, even though the output's very simple. It's easy for our advisors to illustrate and show a client uh, and make it meaningful for so them. So it's got more depth to it than your typical Monte Carlo simulation that comes with a lot of the software packages out there. Correct. Because of those three added moving parts. Okay. That's right. So you make adjustments with people. How often? It's a great question. Uh, with a psychometric profile, it tends to be stable, meaning the personality profile. That doesn't mean you do it once and you never do it again, but it also doesn't mean you have to do it necessarily every year either. Well, if somebody gets married, it might be a good time to do it again. If somebody gets divorced Absolutely. or there's a death of a spouse. And interestingly, not just because of personality, because when you get to their ability to take risk, any kind of change in financial circumstances, anything that is going to update the information that we have, when someone retires, the rate at which they're saving money, even where they're saving it. If they're now saving more into their 401k than they were saving into their brokerage account, or from a Roth to a traditional IRA, any moving part, any known new expenditures, maybe it's paying for that kid's wedding that we didn't know about before. So there are a lot of things that could make adjustments to their ability to take risk. What's good about Tolerance Risk is even before we get to those events, we can, we really being the clients working with us, can have good estimates as to what those things are. We may not know when the kid's wedding is going to occur, but we may plan on paying for a wedding or two weddings or three weddings as the case might be. So we can, we can plan for those and we can see how making changes to those kinds of assumptions can impact that, uh, that ability to take risks. We give them a good idea of how this path will evolve for them. So every survey out there about uh, concerns and attitudes with baby boomers says that the biggest fear that boomers have is outliving their money. Mm -hmm. And that's a very real problem for a lot of people and millions of baby boomers that haven't saved enough will probably end up uh, in dire straits at some point. Hopefully none of your clients. But what, uh, what can be done uh, when you're talking about income planning using Tolerisk? I know that some people are big fans of annuities, many people are not. But really, when you think about it, Social Security is an annuity. If you're lucky enough to have a defined benefit <coughs> pension plan, that's an annuity. And so uh, does Tala Risk help determine uh, an appropriate amount of annuity income to dial into somebody's plan? So we're agnostic in terms of, as you said, so some, some advisors are for them, some might not be for them. We don't have a specific stance. Our job is to provide the infrastructure so that an advisor can evaluate them and see how it will benefit a client. So you're absolutely right. 
we, the advisor can say, here's what it looks like to take Social Security at 67 versus 70, or here's what it looks like to convert some of your liquid assets to a guaranteed fixed income annuity. Um, and a lot of that's gonna be determined based on life expectancy assumptions. We let them be customized. Even though we have all that data in there, the advisor's client might not be average. Uh, Sally or John might have great family history, they might be in great health, and they've got great habits. You know, they're non-smokers and so forth. So that can be customized in Tolerisk. And for somebody that has an above average life expectancy, guaranteeing some of that fixed income is a great way to protect against those scenarios where one or both of them might live a very prolonged life. Mm -hmm. So using your services and your software, people can live better longer by eliminating a lot of the unknowns. And the fewer unknowns you have, the less fearful you will be and the more confident you'll be that your plan will work. That is correct. Mark, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully we can have you back at some point. Uh, this is Bill Borton, your host with Live Better Longer. I've enjoyed having Mark Friedenthal from Tolerisk and Friedenthal Financial as my guest. Until next Tuesday on RVN TV, have a great day and a great week. Thank you.